G'day guys, Shane here. Today we are testing 10 functions that I use most days on the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the S21 Ultra, and I'm gonna see if you guys can guess which phone is which. Let's get into it. Now these two phones, they're pretty similar to each other. One has more functionality, one's a little bit easier to use. I've used both of these as my day-to-day -day carry, and uh, I've swapped between the two on a pretty regular basis. Some, fu some functionality on the cameras is much better on one, I find, than on the other. But today what we're doing, I'm gonna do run through 10 different functions of the regular sort of functions on these two cameras. I'll put them on the screen, blind test for you guys, and you decide which one you like the best. All right, first up, portrait mode. So these two photos here, I took this morning when we were walking the dogs, you can see there the one on the left looks a little bit lighter, the one on the right has more saturation. If we look into Sarah's eyes there, that's my wife, Sarah, um, behind the tint of the glasses, the one on the right certainly darker, the one on the left, I think there's more detail in that. And if we look at the contrast, the overall contrast of these two photos, the one on the right certainly looks like it's more contrasted. The one on the left looks more like a like an S-log sort of a, a, a look to it, um, like it's flatter, there's a bit more haze to it. And I suspect that you'd get more of an edit with the photo on the left than what you would on the right. Um, but the sky is interesting. I'll turn her around and, and shot into the sun then, and this is what it came out like. So the sky is blown out in the left-hand photo, and there's a bit more contrast again in the right-hand photo, but um, there's still, I think, a bit more dynamic range in the left-hand photo. So, personal preference there, I think the photo on the left has, has got it. I'm interested to see what you think. Do you know which one's which yet? Anyway, let's have a look at what we've got after the portrait mode. This next photo is simply a regular photo with the wide angle lens, not the ultra wide, just the regular camera lens, wide lens. And uh, this is a, one of the roses from my rose bush at the back of my house. These are both taken exactly the same time, exactly the same distance from the flower, and they're very different. The one on the right is certainly heavier contrast. There is a lot more saturation to the photo. But what I found interesting with this is, look at the rocks in the background. The rocks on the photo on the left seem to be blurred, a little bit of that uh, bokeh sort of look about it. Um, the one on the right, everything seems to be in focus across the board. If you look up in the top corner there, on the left-hand corner on the right-hand photo, even the trees in the background beyond the photo look like they're even pretty well in focus. So there's a lot of um, um, depth of field, if you like, to, to that photo. Whereas the one on the left, it's, it's more of an artistic sort of a look to it. Um, this is pretty common. Now, if you've played with either of these two phones, you probably know which one's which by now. But anyway, let's have a look at something else. Next photo is zoom, and I'm testing the zoom, the three time zoom, or the two and a half time zoom, depending on which device we're talking about. The photo on the left, well, look, both of these look pretty bloody good, I think. There's a little bit more saturation on the one on the right hand side. I think the trees look like they're a bit more saturated, and the grass behind looks a little bit more saturated. But the detail in this photo, there's a there's a lot of contrasting on the, a lot of texture on the ground there. And it's been picked up pretty well with both of those. You can see Frankie, our little Jack Russell in the background there. But it's all, um, there's nothing lost in any of these two photos. I think they both look pretty bloody good. So if you're someone who zooms uh, just a small amount of zoom, they're, they're, they're comparable, these two, these two devices. They're, they're pretty well the same, I think, at this level here. Do you know which one's which yet? Let's try something a little bit different. Let's try some video. Up next is video at 4K. This is Sarah getting her horse ready to go for a ride. The one on the right looks more contrasted than the one on the left. The one on the left looks flatter. Again, I think it would edit better. Uh, if you were into editing video, I think it would edit better. This one here is with wide angle, the ultra wide in video as well. They both look pretty bloody good. I did see something there though in one of those videos that probably gave up the game. You may have seen it. Um, anyway, which one is which? Let's move on. Next up we're looking at slow-mo. I shoot a little bit of slow-mo. I don't mind it at all. It's a good bit of fun. We're finding the same thing here. We find the photo or the video on the right hand side is more contrasted. The video on the left is a lot more hazy, a lot flatter. Again, you could edit this up. I dare say if you edit it, the left hand one would look better than what the right hand one does. Ultra wide photos. So here's a photo in the studio where I am right now. The photo on the left 
is ultra wide, one of the rise ultra wide, and if you look down the bottom left hand corner of the photo, you'll see there the sound paneling that I use. The one on the left has a wider field of view. Interesting, exactly the same spot, ultra wide camera, the left hand photo has a wider field of view. Moving on now to night mode, we're not talking about stars, we're not talking about anything like that, we're talking about low light photography indoors, and what I'm taking a photo of here is a little toy, it's about two or three inches tall. Both photos here use night mode, one of them is definitely better than the other. The left hand one looks nice and crisp and sharp on the photo in that cow's head, the one on the right, it's pretty noisy, there's a lot of grain there, and there's not that much detail on that toy. Left hand one has definitely got the better photo here. Let's jump back over to video now and have a look at the stabilization on both of these phones. Again, the left hand one looks flatter. A look at the stabilization. You can see a little bit of movement in the footprints, in the foot movement. The right hand one is definitely more stable. Right hand one has got it there. Now the next photo is going to give up the game. You're going to know which one's the left and which one's the right if you've played with either of these photos or these cameras before. All right, let's have a look. This is a $10 note, $10 Australian note. Looks like that here in Australia. And both these photos, I've got the camera touching the actual note as it's folded over roughly like that and taking, it's touching the edge of the photo, touching the edge of the, the uh, dollar note, $10 note. And you can see there that one's got focus, one doesn't. And if you've played with either of these phones, you know which one can focus nice and tight. Let's have a look at another photo. The very last thing we're looking at here is a time lapse, and I'm talking about an automatic transitioning time lapse. One camera will do it really well, one will do it less than well. And I'm talking about doing this all inside the phone, hitting time lapse, touching on the sky for focus, and letting it do its thing. One phone here will automatically transition from night to day, the other one, not so much. Don't look. Did you pick out which one is which? The left hand photos, the left hand videos have all been on the iPhone 12 Pro Max and the right hand side has been the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. I think when you look at the photos in my personal point of, from my personal point of view, and that's what this is, it's your own personal preference. If you like it to be flatter and you're going to edit the photos, yeah, chances are the iPhone is going to be where you want to be. If you are happy with the video, well, me personally, I think the photos have it on the iPhone and the videos have it <laughs> on the S21. I think the S21 does a better job with video. Um, let me know your thoughts, guys. I'm really keen to know what you think. Comment down the bottom here, and uh, I'll see you guys next week. I'll catch you later.